Okay, so it's 7.30, so we will begin. And the prayer that I'm going to be using to begin tonight, uh, is, of course, is taken from the book, and it's on page 246. It's a prayer that I composed, and uh, it's asking for uh, St. Joseph to intercede for the souls in purgatory. And I thought on this Memorial Day weekend in the United States, that'd be something nice to do to begin with today. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Joseph, reigning in heaven with Jesus and Mary, intercede for the souls in purgatory. Today in particular, I ask you to turn your gaze to the soul who is most forgotten in purgatory. This soul longs to see the face of God, O good Father. Ask the Holy Trinity to take this soul to the glory of heaven today. Remember me, St. Joseph, when I die. I beg you to be prompt in delivering me from purgatory so that I can see you, Jesus, and Mary face to face. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we begin this time on day number four of our consecration to St. Joseph, we ask you to be with us, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, cover us with the cloak of St. Joseph, our spiritual father. Help us to come and know and love him in a deeper way so that we can draw closer to Christ and reach you, our ultimate end, and be with you forever in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so as I have uh, mentioned before, I'm just going to go through a couple uh, notes from yesterday. I read the comments as much as I can um, after this thing is done every evening. And so some of the things that I wanted to address were, Again, uh, some people were asking me, it's so funny, I, I have gone over this so many times in the last four months with others, but people are still confused sometimes. And on every day, at the bottom of the page, so like today, for example, day number four, after you read the first two pages, it tells you, read Privileges of Devotion to St. Joseph, page 226. Okay, that doesn't mean that you only read page 226. It doesn't read, mean that you read page 225. People are like, Father, does, do I read the pages before it? I'm like, dude, dude. I'm like, it says 226. So begin on 226, and then you read that section, the entire section that is called Privileges of Devotion to St. Joseph. Okay? So I'll probably have to be repeating this. People just, they're not seeming to get that, some some people. So I'm like, I don't know, maybe next time I got to like put pages 226 to to whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I thought that was pretty simple, but some people are tripping up on that. So, all right, so remember that, okay? Continue to do the readings before we meet. It's best that you do that. And then um, somebody, it was funny, <coughs> they sent me a private Facebook message and they said, Father, this is great. I'm really enjoying it, but um, why do you make the sign of the cross backwards? Uh, you know, or they said with your left hand. And I thought to myself and I'm like, wait, what? And then it dawned on me on the Facebook version. It's because I didn't know how to flip the screen. And so you were seeing everything that I was doing backwards or reverse or whatever. So I think I've got that now. I really hope that I do. Um, so when I hold up the book, I really hope that you're seeing it in, in the real way. Like you can read this and it's not backwards. I don't know if it is. I am so sorry. I just, I'm not a techie guy. It's a miracle that we made it to day four without any major problems. So that's pretty awesome in my book. Okay, guys, that's it from the comments. Um, at the end, I'm going to tell you about the contest again. Be doing that every day, of course. And then something else that I want to show you that um, I just got, that we just made, and uh, they're really, really neat. So I'll save that to the end. Okay, so let's go to day four, which is in the book on page 19. And remember, we're just going through the litany of St. Joseph. So now we move into the title, God, the Son, Redeemer of the World, have mercy on us. Now, I start off with a quote from St. Alphonsus Liguori. And I don't know if you know this, but <clears throat> he is the author of the most popular book, the one that has gone into the most translations and has been the best-selling Marian book of all time so far. That book is The Glories of Mary. The Glories of Mary. Now, I'll mention another book that I think is going to probably catch up to that pretty soon. And the reason why uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori's book is, is number one 
Um, and he's awesome. I mean, he's, he's a doctor of the church. He's an incredible saint. So he says, the holy example of Jesus Christ, who while upon earth honored St. Joseph so highly and was obedient to him during his life, should be sufficient to inflame the hearts of all with devotion to this saint. He's right. He's absolutely right. And, you know, St. Alphonsus Le Liguori, he actually has some incredible uh, writings on St. Joseph. And they appear at the end of his book, The Glories of Mary. Um, some of the newer versions, I don't know, their translations I I'm not thrilled about. They tend to go a little maybe, um, I don't want to say politically correct, but that probably is what I mean. Um, it's just a little too modern for my taste. Some of these newer translations of things, just leave it as it was, man. You know, we can figure out what a thee means and what a thou means, you know. Um, so at the end of that, he has some stuff on St. Joseph. So I have a lot of that in the book. But if you wanted to check it out on your own. Now, why is St. Alphonsus de Liguori's book, The Greatest, Glories of Mary, the greatest Marian book of all time? Well, because it's had, it's had the longest, you know, life. So he lived, I think it was like the 18th century. Um, or maybe this, yeah, something like that. And um, so it came out and it circulated everywhere. It went all over the place. Now, most people probably are more familiar with St. Louis de Montfort and true devotion to Mary. And his book probably would be number one on having the most translations and being circulated around the world the most because he lived shortly after St. Alphonsus Liguori. But the, the issue with why it isn't is because almost all of his works were buried in a field in France for like 150 years. So they weren't discovered until the mid uh, 19th century. So the works of St. Louis de Montfort. So he's catching up and probably will soon overpass uh, St. Alphonse de Liguori. Both of them are awesome. But what's interesting is um, even though St. Alphonse de Liguori has some things about St. Joseph, it's not tons of material, but he has some. St. Louis de Montfort really hardly has anything about St. Joseph. Um, he has a, a few prayers here and there. He has his version of like a, a Hail Mary that's to St. Joseph. And one, one day we'll read that short prayer. It's a beautiful little prayer. But he doesn't have a lot. And, you know, you might think at first glance, wow, why is that? Did he not love St. Joseph? Did he not care about much about St. Joseph? No, he totally did, right? All saints love St. Joseph. But there was no, remember, up until recently, there really wasn't a developed theology about St. Joseph. You had various writers, you know, a bishop in France back in the 15th, 16th century, and this mystic over here, but there wasn't a lot coming out of Rome, out of the Vatican. Remember, the first encyclical on St. Joseph did not come out until 1889, that encyclical by Pope Leo XIII. So this is, this is relatively new in the church calendar. So I almost guarantee you, that if St. Louis de Montfort were, were here today on the earth and walking through France, preaching on Marian consecration and the rosary like he did back in his day, I almost guarantee you that if he had the knowledge that we have now, of course he has it in heaven, but if he was here on earth today, I bet you that he would be preaching about St. Joseph too in a profound way. Many people are familiar with his phrase, to Jesus through Mary. I love that phrase. Oh, man, I remember the days of my conversion to Catholicism, and I was just consuming everything that I could uh, by the saints and by St. John Paul II. And I came across that phrase, you know, to Jesus through Mary. And I was like, that's just brilliant. That is so well said. What a great theological, spiritual axiom uh, to, to have, you know, for us. I bet you if St. Louis de Montfort were here today, as I say in the book, that he would probably add to that phrase that he came up with, to Jesus through Mary and Joseph. And Joseph. Why? Because today we've got this anthropological crisis. We've got the confusion and, and, and chaos in families, in marriages, with the gender ideology craziness that's a plague on the planet right now. We've got all of this. So we need a mother and a father. We need to make clear distinctions today. Because there's a lot of craziness going on in the world. You know, you, you've got you've got stuff today, guys, where you can have, you know, what are they transvestites or what are those uh, drag queens? I think they're drag queens or something like that. Reading to 
children in public libraries. <laughs> what? I mean, and people think this is legit. They think this is, they see no problem with this. This is like whack. And yet, you know, it, it's ha it happens. We've got such confusion that you can actually find parents today, parents today, who are basically committing a form of child abuse when they want to turn their little three-year-old boy into a girl. No three-year-old boy is thinking about being a girl. He didn't even know what a boy is. He's playing with his little trucks and a pile of dirt, right? But if you want to change him, it, it ain't that little baby, that little child that's talking about wanting to be a different sex. It's because you got a warped understanding of things. You got your own agenda. And that's a form of child abuse. I know that those are strong words, but it's true. But see, this is why today we need to add and Joseph. We go to Jesus through Mary and Joseph because we need a mother and a father. We've got to get back to these very clear distinctions. And we've got to understand the importance of, you know, a little girl and a little boy need a mother and a little boy, you know, needs a mother and a father. Uh, I mean, this stuff is so important today that we've got to bring in Joseph. We've got to bring in the head of the Holy Family, the model of fatherhood, the model of being a husband into our current situation. And I think that St. Louis de Montfort would do that because he addressed the issues of his day and we've got the problems today. And so we need to bring in St. Joseph. You know, there's a, a little line in here that I wrote that um, is pretty awesome. It says, the two greatest saints in Christianity are Mary and Joseph. And you know what dawned upon me? I don't think it's in the book. Um, but after, as I was starting to give talks, that not only are the two greatest saints in Christianity, Mary and Joseph, but here's something to pr profound to think about. The two greatest saints in Christianity are lay people, are a mom and a dad. Think of, let that sink in. You know, most people are not called to what I am, a priest. Yes, many are called, you know, and, and hopefully they respond, but the majority of people, in Christianity are lay people. And that's that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. And the greatest saints in Christianity are lay people. Mary and Joseph were not popes, priests, bishops, whatever, and they didn't want to be. See, that's 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 something we need to think about. Because you got a lot of people today with crazy ideas. It's an injustice that as a woman I can't be a priest in the Catholic Church. It ain't an injustice. You just got jacked up thinking, is what you got. Really? That's like me as a dude walking around on the street saying, it's an injustice that I can't have a baby. No, my body ain't got a womb. <laughs> and you can try and fake it, man. You can try and go to a doctor and you can try to get some implants and whatever, you know, and, and slice and dice this and do this and that. But I ain't going to be a woman. Mm -mm. Ain't ever going to happen. Never. See, this is why we need to bring in the clarity of the and the beauty, the gift that your particular sex is masculine, masculine or feminine, and that's why we got to bring Joseph into this. We've got to get this stuff. We got to go back to the basics. We've got to go back to the one hundred and one stuff because today in our world, we've lost it, and we've got to let the laity know. And they they know. I mean, it's you know been teaching this forever, but your vocation is to greatness, is to be a saint. The greatest saints of Christianity were laity. The greatest saints of Christianity were a mom and a dad, were a husband and a wife. That's amazing. I mean, those of you who are laity, which is probably 97% of you watching this, you should be honored by that. I mean, that is just fantastic. As I go through this particular day, I have a great quote by Blessed Januarius uh, Maria Sarnella. You probably don't know who he is. We'll find out later when we talk about the, the seven joys and sorrows of St. Joseph. But he has something that I put in there that it's a great quote. How thou, St. Joseph, didst respond to have always near you God himself, and to see the idols of the Egyptians fall prostrate to the ground before him, before Jesus Christ. I love these kind of little, little sayings because... You know, idols fall before Jesus Christ. And what a delight it must have been for Joseph to see that. Not to see anybody get harmed. That's not what Mary and Joseph are about. Of course not. But to see false things fall and crumble. 
another great mystic of the church, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, talks about that and how when the Holy Family went to Egypt, that when they walked into Egypt, which was pagan territory at the time, um, that idols were falling to the ground. Can you imagine to, 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 to witness that? I hope in heaven, God willing, I, I'm, I'm a member there. You know, I would love to rewind history and like, you know, just sit down and, and watch this and watch what happened when the Holy Family went into Egypt. And you know, what's interesting is a lot of people today, they think, yeah, OK, but that was 2000 years ago. We certainly don't have anything like that today. Really? What about Pachamama? Yep. That's an idol. That's an idol. These things need to be destroyed. They do not belong in our churches. We should not be bowing down to th these things. The earth is not our mother. Mm -mm. That's for a culture that's gone astray from, from, from Christi its Christian roots and, and doesn't want to call the Blessed Virgin Mary our mother. The earth is not my mother. Mm -mm. I love, oh, trust me, I love nature, all that stuff. I, I, I do. I love to be out in the outdoors and all of that. But it's not my mom. It's not my mom. It's not your mom either. See, we've got idols in our day that we've got to address. We've got to bring in the head of the Holy Family because he brings us Jesus. He brings us the fullness of the truth. And with him and Jesus, we will see these idols fall. But we've got to realize that they are idols and we've got to take a stand because we've got some real problems going on today and we've got to address that stuff. See, consecration to St. Joseph will increase your love for Jesus. When you're close to St. Joseph, you're going to be able to decipher what's right and what's wrong, what's light and what's darkness, what's truth and what's false. Really, that's what St. Joseph can do for us. And that's what he that's what he wants to do for us. So, my friends, we have got to go to Jesus through Mary and Joseph. And there are privileges. There are great privileges that come with devotion to St. Joseph. So let's check those out. So turn to page 226, where I, we go through the privileges of St. Joseph. We'll get, it, get into them uh, just in a second. Uh, but first, I mentioned uh, someone who was pretty incredible and that I didn't know about. You know, I did extensive research and preparation for putting this book together. And I discovered a blessed I'd never heard of, Blessed Maria uh, Teresa of St. Joseph. Uh, have you, any, any of you heard of her? You know, what's amazing was after the book came out, um, a sister contacted me and she said, Father, I can't believe that you put the founder of our religious community in your book. Not that many people know about our community and they don't know about our founder. Thank you so much, Father. And I was like, oh, you're more than welcome. I, I didn't know about her either. But wow, she's great. You know, she's she's amazing. So check her out. She was a, in the a 19th century woman who was born into a staunchly Protestant family. And her father was even a, a Lutheran minister. And somehow, you know, I don't know all the details. I'd have to read up more on it. I read her um, autobiography, uh, but I'm sure there's tons more. She fell in love with Catholicism and she wanted to become a Catholic. But boy, her father was not liking that at all. He was not happy about that at all. He was so upset that he actually didn't even want her living in his house anymore. Can you imagine what what kind of father is that? So he 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 basically told her to you know beat it. So she left and she um, got a job and she was in the process of becoming Catholic. And then when she became Catholic, her employer, who was a Protestant, you know, knew that she had become Catholic and basically fired her. And then he started slamming her name all around town so that she couldn't get a job anywhere. I mean, horrible, right? And then she was pretty much homeless. She ended up uh, becoming like a servant at a convent so that she could live there and, and have a place to live and have meals. And then um, she ended up uh, becoming a nun herself and founding her own religious community. And she took the name uh, Sister Maria Teresa of St. Joseph because she loved St. Joseph. And why did she do that in particular? Well, one time before she was even Catholic, her father came to visit her where she was living at the time when she had that job, you know, before she got fired. And he was kind of roaming through her house and he found a book in her bedroom on St. Joseph and he glossed through it 
And then at dinner that night, this is this is what happened. This is what she recounts in her autobiography of what her dad did. How, how sad is this? During the dinner, my father said, how can anyone pray to such an outlandish man, meaning St. Joseph? This expression outlandish or foreign made a deep impression on me. I thought more and more of St. Joseph, and I conceived such a great tender devotion to dear Father St. Joseph, as I called him, that I thought I ought to make reparation for the coldness of all unbelievers toward him. Wow. She's called him Father St. Joseph. She got it. She understood it, who St. Joseph is. And then I have another quote there from her I won't read, but she gave everything to St. Joseph, and then she ended up taking his name and founding a religious community called the Carmelite Sisters. Remember, Carmelites, very devoted to St. Joseph, Carmelite Sisters of the Divine Heart of Jesus. How beautiful is that? And she was beatified by Benedict XVI in, in 2006. So maybe someday she'll be a saint. Pray for that. Now, the privileges that I'm going to talk about, there's seven of them. They come from the mystical writings of Venerable Mary of Agreda from Spain. I hope you know about her. She is amazing. I did a lot of research on her when I put together my book called Champions of the Rosary. Um, and she wrote what's called The Mystical City of God, which is uh, a massive uh, tome on the hidden life and the, and the public life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it is a masterpiece. I actually, I want to show it to you because, I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. Check this out. This, this, is, this is what we're dealing with here. Let me put this here so I, I don't lose my page. I thought you'd find this fascinating. This, this is what she wrote, man. Like, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, wow, light reading. No, it's it's amazing reading. There's an abridged version that you can get. When I was in seminary, I read this whole thing, and it was just awesome. I mean, it took me a, a very long time to do it, but um, this is really good stuff. So the, the seven privileges of devotion to St. Joseph are found uh, in that. And there's a lot that she has on St. Joseph um, in the mystical city of God, because you can't really separate the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, right? So well, let me tell you about this, too, before I get into to this, just how awesome this nun was, this, this venerable Mary Vigreda. You know, she was a mystic, so she could bilocate. Do you know what that is? I hope you know what that is. It means basically you can be in multiple places at the same time. Look, I don't know how it works, but God can do this with you know saints, and he does, like Padre Pio, St. Faustina, tons of them. I would love to be able to do this. I could be giving this talk right now and surfing waves in you know, Tahiti be fantastic. Um, I don't think Padre Pio would do that, but I would. So um, anyway, she could be in multiple locations at the same time. And in the 17th century, from the year 1620 to 1623, there was this tribe of Humano Indians. It starts with a J, Humano Indians. They're still in existence, but not in New Mexico. I, they're in Texas, I think, only now. Well, before any missionaries had gone there, um, this tribe of Indians was receiving visits from a, a woman um, dressed in blue. And she was teaching them about Catholicism. And she told them, the Indians, that missionaries would come from the South and they would, gi they would give the tribe the sacraments that she was telling them about. And this woman gave all these Indians rosaries. Yeah, gave them rosaries. So, in 1629, so seven years later, sure enough, missionaries come up because they had been evangelizing like Central and South America. They came up to that part of what's now the United States. They came upon a tribe of Indians in New Mexico at the time that already knew the Catholic faith and no missionaries had been there and already had rosaries. What? Right. So the missionaries were tripping. They were like, wait, how, who beat us here, right? Did, did the Dominicans make it here first or whatever? And um, So they kept really good journals at that time. And so most of the missionaries at that time, not all, but most were from Spain. So they were relaying this stuff in official letters back and forth to Spain and even to the civil authorities in Spain because they were just so blown away by this. So like, we don't know how to explain this. And then it was discovered that at that time there was a famed mystic in Spain in a convent. Um, Mary Vigreda, who was bilocating, 
to a place she had no idea where it was, speaking to these people, teaching them the Catholic faith, and the sisters in her convent in Spain made rosaries, and they had excess piles of them. And so she was like, eh, I'll take some, right? And she gave them to the Indians. I mean, for real. And I'm not making this up. Catholics didn't make this up. Actually, the secular authorities at the time knew this. And there's a church today that you can go to in, uh, I forget the name of the town. You can Google this stuff in New Mexico, where you can see, you know, the, the writing of all these things as it was happening at that time. It's almost like they're in Stations of the Cross around this particular church. It's like a mission church, still is to this day. It's not a big church um, that you can see these things. I mean, that is incredible. So in her writings, Venerable Mary Vigreda, she has a conversation with uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in that conversation, Mary tells her many things about St. Joseph. So I'm going to read um, what Venerable Mary Vigreda said. It's a little long, but it's awesome. This is what she said. I have been informed concerning certain privileges conferred upon St. Joseph by the Most High on account of his great holiness which are especially important to those who ask his intercession in a proper manner. In virtue of these special privileges, the intercession of St. Joseph is most powerful. And she goes through and she lists seven privileges. This is awesome. First, for attaining the virtue of purity and overcoming the sensual inclinations of the flesh. And who doesn't suffer from those? This is a messed up world. We've got disordered passions, right? We, 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 we need help from on high. St. Joseph is such a great intercessor for purity. We need to be crying out to him today in this pornographic, filthy era in which we live. And this was given to her in the 17th century, man, the 1600s. We need this now more than ever. We need to run to St. Joseph for purity. Second, for procuring powerful help to escape sin and return to the friendship of God. We're all tempted. Whatever, we have weaknesses, we have particular you know, things that we struggle with. Flee, run, go to St. Joseph. He will help you. Look at him. You think he's not going to come to your defense? He will, and mightily, fast. Third, for increasing the love and devotion to Most Holy Mary. Yeah, no brainer there. What husband doesn't want his wife to be loved? Every husband would want that. Every husband would want to see his wife crowned and and, and people singing songs to his wife. What husband would not want that? St. Joseph most definitely wants his beauty, his bride, his beloved to be loved. Fourth, for securing the grace of a happy death and protection against the demons in that hour. Yes, this is why the church calls him the patron of a happy and holy death. And we'll cover that in much more extensive way later on. Fifth, for filling the demons with terror at the mere mention of his name by his clients. The terror of demons. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we're going to cover that one big time, too. But just imagine, you know, a lot of times we... We, we cry out to, to Jesus and Mary when, when, when we're going through maybe what we consider a spiritual attack or something like that. And those names are powerful. Throw Joseph in there. Right? Throw Joseph in there. I remember, you know, well, I wasn't Catholic, but now watching all this old stuff, people, you know, Fulton Sheen, when he would write on that chalkboard, he just didn't put J.M. He put J.M.J. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Don't forget Joseph, he's the mighty terror of demons. Demons terrified of his name. If you're going through a temptation or a struggle or whatever it is, cry out to him. Just his name is what we're being told is a privilege. Sixth, for gaining health of body and assistance in all kinds of difficulties. We're going to talk about this later, but just a little, uh, I keep saying, I'm so sorry, but we, you know, we got 33 days. So, um, one of the most miraculous places on the planet is in Montreal, Canada, at the Oratory of St. Joseph. So many miracles have been worked through the intercession of St. Joseph for healings, for you know blessings of marriages, for healing of marriages, and all so many things. It's incredible. And then seventh, for securing issue of children and families. You want a baby? You want to have a baby? 
St. Joseph is your man. Ask him. Ask him. St. Joseph, help us to conceive. I've encountered many people who have said to me, Father, we've been trying for so long to have a baby. And, you know, go to Joseph. Ask him to help you. And, you know, we got to have babies, man. We need Catholic babies. We've got the Muslims who are breeding like crazy. And the Christians are contracepting themselves out of existence. There's a big problem. Just ask Germany or England right now. All they know. Or Spain or Italy. You know, St. John Paul II, before he died, he actually said, I think it was to like to the Italian parliament or whatever their system of government is over there, to the big guys. He said, basically, tell your people to have children. Have you been to Europe recently? Not a lot of babies running around. Seriously. I mean, you just don't hardly ever see it. We need to have a lot of babies right now because we're going to be in trouble. I mean, they're talking about this sociologically, like we're not keeping up with the with the birth rate and we're going to have a generation soon that's going to be really old and we're going to be in trouble. We're not doing what we need to do to replenish this thing. Meanwhile, the Muslims are. Venerable Fulton Sheen talks about this. This is going to be a problem, my friends. Go to Joseph. We need to have a lot of babies. Don't be afraid to have a lot of babies. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Do it. Okay, we we need this. We need holy Catholic families. So go to Joseph. Go to Joseph. Okay, here's some a part that I love. Oh, I love it. And it was it was almost like I a challenge from the Blessed Virgin Mary to me when I was putting this book together. Um, and you'll see what I mean when when I read it. So this is the, are the words of Our Lady, our sweet Mother, as she is speaking now. Uh, to Venerable Mary of Agreda about St. Joseph, her beloved husband. My daughter, although thou hast described my spouse, St. Joseph, as the most noble among the princes and saints of the heavenly Jerusalem, yet neither canst thou properly manifest his eminent sanctity, nor can any of the mortals know it fully before they arrive at the vision of the divinity. Then all of them will be filled with wonder and praise as the Lord will make them capable of understanding. On the last day, when all men shall be judged, the damned will bitterly bewail their sins, which prevented them from appreciating this powerful means of their salvation and availing themselves, as they easily could have, of this intercessor to gain the friendship of the just judge. The whole human race has much undervalued the privileges and prerogatives conceded to my beloved spouse, and they know not what his intercession with God is able to do. That right there says it all. We have undervalued this man. We have not paid enough attention to this man and what he, the closeness that he has with, with Jesus Christ and what he's able to do for us. And Our Lady in there, you heard when I read it, she says, we're never going to fully know his greatness before we arrive at the vision of divinity. I was When I was putting this book together, when I discovered that quote, I was like, wait, what? Bomber! I was like, wait, Blessed Mother, you're saying that I'm not going to be able to totally unpack the greatness, the wonder, the beauty, the dignity, the titles, the privileges, the honors of our great St. Joseph? No. Because he's so awesome. And we're only going to understand how awesome he is when we get to heaven. But don't let it be too late to try your hardest to get close to him now. Because we can do this. She says that we can do it now. If we don't, we're going to be sorry on that final day. Because we could have availed ourselves to his intercession now. Even though we don't know how great he is, we can run to him now. Because he's our spiritual father. So that, that is powerful. Can you imagine what? what things we're going to discover and, and be told about the great St. Joseph. I mean, the same thing goes for our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, we know him and we love him, but we're going to spend all of eternity, you know, gazing upon the beauty of the divine face and just go from glory to glory and just, oh, it's going to be incredible. And with Our Lady too, I mean, here we know great things about her. We know you know, she's the Immaculata and all of, we know all these wonders, but still we're, we're going to be just in awe of the greatness and the totality of who she is. And the same thing with St. Joseph. So powerful stuff. Okay, I'll end with this. Um, you know, there's a blessed that I, I didn't know much about, 
and I still don't know tons about, I know enough, but um, a lot of people, when they saw that I put her in the book, they were really excited too, because like, Father, you put the the Mexican mystic in there. Blessed uh, Conception Cabrera de Armida. You, no, no, not that many people know. How did you know about her? I, well, I was doing a lot of research. And I discovered that she loves St. Joseph. And she has some great stuff on St. Joseph. And probably things that I haven't even discovered yet. Because uh, her works, of course, were in Spanish. And I, you know, I could read Spanish pretty well. But I, I only had a selection of things to go through uh, from her. So I'm sure that there's a lot more that uh, somebody is going to be able to unpack and, 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 and bring out of her writings. But she would write these beautiful meditations. And here's one where she um, is, you know, communicating to us what Our Lady would say about St. Joseph. Listen to this. This is so nice. She says, love him, St. Joseph, my child, and make him much loved. If you seek to please me, you cannot do anything that makes me happier than to have a filial devotion to him, to give him honor in your home, and to imitate his virtues. Take him as the patron of your interior and spiritual life, and you will advance greatly towards perfection. Wow. Remember, St. Joseph wants his wife to be known and loved, crowned and song sang to her, while Our Lady wants her beloved husband to be known and loved. She wants people to delight in him and to come close to him. And she says that it pleases her when we do this. So, my friends, these are the privileges. And if you want to keep going back through them, those seven, you know, they're on page 228 in, in the hard copy version. Uh, I, I just think they're wonderful. And I think that they'll really help us to grow um, in virtue, fleeing from sin and coming closer to Christ giving us peace at you know, the hour of our death, which is always a struggle. It's hard to let go, right? I, as a priest, I've seen this. People, it's not easy. But St. Joseph, he will be such a comfort for us and all of these privileges if we just go to him, if we just fly to him. Okay, my friends, so on page 233, remember, you're going to get very familiar with page 233. That's where the litany of St. Joseph is. We're going to pray that together like we have been the last several days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. Chase guardian of the virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the holy family, pray for us. Joseph most just, pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fourth day where we learn to bring Joseph into everything, to go to Jesus 
your Son and our Savior, through Mary and Joseph. We pray for the intercession of St. Alphonsus de Liguori and St. Saint Louis de Montfort and all these great Marian saints. Help us to be like them, to be zealous for our Mother Mary, to be zealous for St. Joseph, our spiritual father. Help us to be like Blessed Maria Teresa of St. Joseph and know that he is Father Joseph to us, that he loves us, that he wants to protect us in our day from false gods, from idols, and bring us to the fullness of truth in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray for these gifts. We pray for these privileges of devotion to St. Joseph to be poured out upon us and our families, for marriages, for the procuring of children, for the healing of addictions, for happy and holy deaths, for the overcoming of every temptation, of all sin, so that we can be pleasing to you. And we ask this, as always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, my friends, so don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Okay, remember, don't ever leave at the end. I still got to talk about the contest because people are tuning in every day, uh, new people jumping on board. So remember, the last five days of this 33-day uh, series, Consecration, I'm going to be giving away 50 items, 5-0, 50 free items. And the way that you participate in this contest to be able to be eligible to win is you do a review on Amazon of Consecration to St. Joseph. Doesn't have to be poetic, doesn't have to be long, just something about the book, and uh, you're in. And on the final five days, I will go through those days and I will, in your presence, live, scroll through Amazon and just randomly select one and you'll be a winner for one of these items. Okay, so the items are going to be 10 of these and I'll sign all of them and you'll even, somebody will get this one, the one I'm making all my notes in for this little series. And then you're going to get, uh, I'm going to be doing these. So remember, 10 of these, somebody, 10 people will win. Love it. Ten of these. Love it. Ten of these. Super love it. And then ten of these. St. Joseph, the Terror of Demons. Love it, love it, love it. Now, check this out. Since I uh, saw you guys yesterday, something else has come out that's not going to be in the contest. Although maybe I'll slip them in the free books that people win. We'll see if I have enough because I'm going to be giving these things out everywhere. We just made prayer cards with some of the images. So these we have these new prayer cards, which have a beautiful one of the acts of consecration on the back to St. Joseph. So you can get these on that website, consecration to St. Joseph.org. Okay, there's a stack. I think this is a stack of 100. If you go on there and just buy one, I think they're 12 cents each. Uh, the, the postage is going to be insane compared to the price of the thing. So you probably want to get a stack of like a hundred. I don't, it's like $10 or something like that. So we got these ones really, really nice. I'm going to be handing these out everywhere. And then we've, we got three prayer, new prayer cards. Then we've got this one. You may not have seen this image yet. It's in the book, but um, this is a really, really nice one. This lady, this young lady, um, her father is super devoted to St. Joseph and he's written uh, stuff about St. Joseph, books about St. Joseph. Um, the last name, her last name is Stott. I don't, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so he's got, her father is, is a Josephologist. He really spreads devotion to St. Joseph and her Gabrielle, she, um, I believe is got a call to be a nun and she, she might actually already be in the convent. I commissioned her to paint this image of St. Joseph, the, the patron of the church. And on the back is a beautiful prayer, uh, to St. Joseph by St. Francis de Sales. So that's a, the, the second card, prayer card that we have now. Really nice. And then this one. <laughs> you guys, uh, you know I love this image. We got that one. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that image. So, and on the back, this is the St. Joseph Terror of Demons. And on the back is the prayer to St. Joseph Terror of Demons. So really, really awesome. So um, you can get these, the books, and the canvas images. You don't have to wait to try and win the stuff on that website, consecration to stjoseph.org. All right, my friends, I pray that you have a good evening or good morning, wherever you are in the world, and we will see you tomorrow. Ite ad Yosef. Go to Joseph. God bless you.